Hello, I am Manus Peters and I work at Newcastle University. I'm a chemical engineer and I work on sensors. So the most important sensor we have is your nose, so you can smell things. Obviously you get your ears to hear things and you can also, with your skin, feel whether it's cold or warm. In our body you also got small proteins, which are called antibodies. They can specifically recognise molecules. So they can recognise, for instance, viruses or bacteria when they enter your body. So here I'm going to show you an example of E. coli, which is a bacteria, of which you've got millions in your gut, but unfortunately some of these are harmful. And because these antibodies are so sensitive, that's why they're often used in sensors. So in the example of an E. coli sensor, you'd want to check whether food or water samples are contaminated with E. coli, because it can cause an infection. Now the problem with all of this is that the antibodies used in these sensors, they are obtained from animals, such as rabbits and mice. And you probably don't realise it, but in the UK alone, over 50,000 animals are used per year to produce these antibodies. So we produce plastic materials that can serve as direct replacements of antibodies. So here you can see that these plastic materials contain cavities, which are exactly the same size and shape of whatever you want to detect. So you can see in the case of E. coli, it nicely fits within this cavity, whereas if you would have another bacteria, such as Staph aureus, which is round, it's not a fit. Now, because we can replace antibodies, this project has a huge impact on animal welfare. But the binding by the bacteria, that is actually something that we detect by a colour change. And now I'm going to show you an experiment that you can do at home. So the example will show you how you can use a sensor that changes colour when changes in acidity. Here you've got a blue tea, which is blue because it contains the leaves of the butterfly pea flower tea, common tea in Asia. So here you're going to see what happens if we add something acidic, like a lemon to it, or for instance vinegar. So here you see that the colour is starting to change. Wait for it. You will see it turns this really nice purple, which is because you had a solution which was neutral before, and then became acidic because we added the lemon to it. So if we want to make it back to the blue colour, meaning we have to go back from something acidic to something neutral, we have to add something alkaline to it. So something alkaline, or you might have heard the term basic, could be for instance soap, or you can use bicarbonate of soda. Bicarbonate of soda is often used in pancakes, so I'm sure you have it at home. You just stir in a little bit, and here you can see it turns back blue again, because the solution is neutral now. So these color changes is a change in chemical structure, and you can use this for instance in a sensor as well. So I can imagine that you don't have this tea at home. You can also go into your garden and, for instance, pick some daffodils because you can see that they also go from colourless when they're acidic to a nice yellow once you have an alkaline solution. You can also go to the website of the Royal Society of Chemistry where it's explained how you can make an indicator yourself from red cabbage. Here you see a sheet of our sensors. This is just normal paper, so it means it's nice and flexible. Every little single black dot is a sensor, so all the material which is on there is in the black dot. Now, if we shine UV light onto these black dots, the material will light up, just like you can see here. So now that we have these sensors, we can place them into a device. So this device is made by 3D printing, which you might have seen a lot of recently. And you can see that the size of the sensor is exactly the same as the hole you've got in there. Now, there are other things that you can make by 3D printing. For instance, I've made this beautiful Olaf, and you can make virtually any design nowadays. And this is a typical filament 3D printer, where the plastic is melted and once it's melted, you can make different shapes out of it. Like for instance, here you see an example of the 3D printer I have in here. In our 3D printed device, the liquid will go in there and there it will hit the sensor. And this is where we monitor whether a colour change happens or not. I think of the example of the tea, where a change in colour is linked to a change in acidity. In the case of our sensors, this change in colour is linked to whether bacteria are present or not. So in the case of E. coli, no colour change, no bacteria. If there is a colour change, it means that the bacteria are present and it could indicate an infection. Now the good thing about the sensors that we have is that they're very fast. Because nowadays it can take several days before the doctor can actually get the result and know which infection you have. Whereas the sensors we have are fast and the faster you treat it, the better the result is for the patient. And we made our device even a lot smaller. So what we need at the moment is not much more, a drop of blood from your finger, which you can get with like a finger prick test. 
Now the other thing that we've changed is that we can detect free bacteria at the same time. Because besides E. coli, there's lots of other bacteria uh, that can cause infections. So the more the doctor can pick up, the better it will be for the test. Now that you know something as simple as T can act as a sensor, can you think of other sensors that you have at home?